Okay, in this Tobacco University video, we're looking at the 2019 CBD cultivar trial data summary from Cornell Hemp Research Facility. So there's a lot of great information in this. I'm gonna to try to provide a brief overview. You're welcome to pause the video to take a look at some of the information presented, as well as look in the description for the source cited, uh, where you can potentially find this information for your, uh, to look at it even further and in more detail. So let's get started. First off, the cultivar details. This is a list of all the cultivars. There's 30 cultivars used in this study that can be seen in this list. In addition, the information provided is the propagation material used, which included uh, dioecious seeds, as we can see here, feminized seeds, so there's a couple listed, and uh, whether it came from a clone, and we can see the clones here. Now, many people are always looking at, you know, where the source of this information, and this is the source where these uh, cultivars Ours, when propagation material was acquired. In addition, if it was grown from seed, we're looking at the percent germination from those, from those seeds. We can see those listed here, some having very high percentage of germinations, some having very low percentage. The NAs are not applicable, of course, apply to the clones because they have no germination. And then we see the percent female, which is very important. Now, if they're dioecious, we would expect them to be 50%. Most of them are hovering around that range. And if they're feminized, we're looking, of course, ideally at 100%, but that doesn't always occur. Here we see a feminized seed of 95%. That still means 5% of those could be male, and it's important always to take a look. And here's the list of the 30 cultivars again. Now, we have the observed uh, CBD to, to THC ratio. So while the ratios were consistently between 20 to 1 and 30 to 1, remember it is not about the ratio, but the percentage of THC that defines a plant as hemp or marijuana. As noted in this trial, most high CBD cultivars will not be compliant with the 0.3 total THC threshold. So it's just important to remember, just because it's a very high CBD producer, it doesn't matter the ratio, it matters the amount of THC produced, percentage of THC produced to be classified as hemp or marijuana from a federal level. The sampling technique, so what was utilized here, the Cornell researchers sampled all 30 cultivars each week after terminal flowering to track cannabinoid accumulation. They also sampled dried and uh, stripped biomass from all 30 cultivars. Because of the consistent CBD THC ratio, cultivars that exceed 7.9% CBD will also exceed the 0.3% total THC because it's a fixed ratio of CBD to THC. So again, just keep that caveat in mind. Now we're looking at total CBD and THC. This is kind of a very interesting graph here. The total CBD and total THC accumulating curves for all 30 cultivars are uh, kind of indicated by the colors here. Most cultivars accumulate high levels of cannabinoids by week two or three. The top 10 centimeters of shoot tips were sampled and cannabinoids were, qual were quanti quantified using an HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography. And then overall, we can see a general trend here of, of we from weeks from terminal flowering, we see that increase. This dotted line represents the total potential THC, and that represents the 0.3 level, the federal limit. Now, most, most people think that the CBD and THC naturally correlate with each other, and we see that true in a lot of the cases, but I want to draw your attention to these two curves right here, where we see the total potential CBD peaking early and then actually dipping as weeks after terminal flower going on, and as those CBD percentages dip, we're seeing an exponential increase here in THC. So this is where also it may come to be important based on what cultivars you might be growing or what strains you might be growing as far as when you harvest. Again, this is all above that 0.3 level, but in certain cultivars, this might be below that 0.3 level and then increase later in the season. So timing of harvest can also potentially play a role depending on what cultivar you might be growing. Again, in these examples, this would be all above that 0.3 level, but just something to consider that it doesn't always correlate with CBD and THC. Now, flowering time is strongly correlated with um, exceeding the 0.3 total THC threshold. So what is this showing? Well, this is a timeline of the growing season milestones for the 30 hemp cultivars yet again. Some cultivars mostly favoring those early flowering ones. Uh, had two distinct flowering groups early represented with the capital E. And we can see here's the early flowering group. Cultivars are ordered from the earliest flowering at the very top here to the latest flowering down here at the bottom. No offense, that Late Sioux is one of the latest flowering varieties. The vertical black line here indicates uh, the transplant date of June 5th. 
Day lengths are listed along the top of the plot at 30 day intervals here. And what we're noticing is in particular of importance, the sample exceeding or greater than 0.3% total THC. And here we see with those that had the earlier flowering groups, they were much more likely to exceed that 0.3 level at an early part of the growing season. Those that were later to flower, we see a typically a trend here where it becomes later that they would exceed potentially that 0.3 THC level there. So again, just some good information here to kind of look at and see the difference that cultivar selection can make. Now, in addition to looking at cannabinoids and uh, terpenes, we also want to consider disease resistance. So powdery mildew susceptibility. There were significant differences in powdery mildew susceptibility by the cultivars. The McCarthy uh, site, site A, had more powdery mildew than the bluegrass lane site B. So overall, this site just had more powdery mildew than the other. Uh, data were logged, uh, transformed for the bluegrass lane farm trial. Letters indicate statistically significant differences between cultivars based on the post hoc two keys HSD test. That's for statistics. While we can look at all the data here, what is definitely an interesting note is that no powdery mildew was observed on first light 58. So that is kind of very interesting. It's indicated by the letter A here. So we can see that all the different letters, again, no significant difference. So there's a lot of cultivars that share that, but because first light only has the A alone and no other letters, it's kind of a genetic kind of standout there, where if you have an area with high powdery mildew system, you know, chance of getting it. If you want a cultivar, it's very low in kind of acquiring that. We can see that these uh, cultivars that have the letter A would be ones to initially look at, but definitely early indications that first light at both sites uh, basically was observed to have basically no powdery mildew. So again, important consideration there, something to look more into. Then we have biomass, and again, this would be a great time to kind of like pause the video here so you can kind of take a look at the biomass, um, the measurements provided. This is per plant averages for biomass measurements, looking at the wet biomass, stripped biomass, dry, percent dry, and percent stripped there, and kind of the differences between the two. So again, this gets into a little bit more of the details of kind of the amount of biomass that would be produced. You can see here late Sue, again, it was one of the later ones to kind of flower, it does produce a very high uh, in comparison uh, biomass there. Then we have the cannabinoid analysis. This is where most growers kind of focus on. Now, cannabinoid analysis for chemotype 3, which is the high CBD individuals. Note that seven cultivars also had other chemotypes, 1 and 2, that consistently exceed that 0.3% total THC threshold. The biomass shoot or ratio is the quotient of the average stripped biomass measurement to the average last shoot tip measurement. Now, I just want to point out that while a lot of growers will look at the total CBD percentages, in this column uh, and take a look and see what they you know can glean from this but we also want to be mindful of the ones highlighted in red are over that 0.3 percent thc level there and because it's a fixed ratio typically if we exceed that um, 0.79 percent cbd that automatically will mean we're going to be above that total thc percentage above the federal limit but in addition to just the main two we're looking at cbc cbg levels so there's a lot of information here another great data table able to take a look at pause to kind of do a little comparison if you've been tracking one of the cultivars throughout here. And then lastly, the cultivar, just the general summaries provided here. Uh, for chemotype, we typically want to avoid uh, type 1 and type 3. Uh, we want to look at the flowering date, the CBD yield per plant, so we can kind of see that um, here, the CBD yield in kilograms. Uh, and where and they do flower. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of different cultivars um, here, a lot of different considerations to take place, but hopefully this provides at least some initial information based on actual research to help guide your decision-making process.